this year, the topic of the 12 lessons will be Meet the Players. For centuries, there has been a conflict between creation and evolution, and there are certain individuals, there are certain icons, there are certain fossils that have been central in the discussion, like uh, the poster girl of evolutionary persuasion, that's Lucy. And so we're going to talk about Lucy next month and see if she really deserves uh, that place in our lineage. Well, she does not, as you know, but we need to academically understand why she does not deserve a position in our lineage, and she is not in our lineage. But this will be an academic research project for the entire year. Lucy next month. After that, we're going to talk about Neanderthal that at one time was considered to be an intermediate and now is recognized as being fully human, not only fully human, but superior. Are you aware that Neanderthal invented super glue? They invented the first super markets, the first malls. They had guilds laid out where you could go to one area and select this bone compared to that bone carved from an antler. You could, uh, you could select uh, goods that were made of leather. They even invented a system for weaving and they invented cloth. That's incredible. Well, of course, they got that from their forebears in the world before the flood. But according to evolutionary study, they're completely out of line in all of this. They were superior. Our brain capacity, cranial capacity, is 1,350 cc's. Theirs was 1,450 cc's. They were more intelligent than we are. So that's not the lecture today. It's, it's easy to get sidetracked because all of these icons of evolution, these players in the conflict between creation versus evolution, these players are very predominant. They're in the news. Uh, they're recast over and over again, so you need to know about them. And if you can't attend all these lectures, uh, just be in touch with us. Hopefully you're on the mailing list. Those who support the museum are on the mailing list, and uh, I send out the handout to, to the supporters every month. In considering the players, the symbols, the evidence, it became very obvious that the first lesson should be on the scientific manual itself, because that has really been the heart of the controversy. There was a time in medieval history, especially in Europe, but it uh, channeled over to the Orient as well. There was a time when ecclesiastical groups, organizations, corporations as we would call secular areas today, and individuals took advantage of the scriptures for their own benefit and there was objection to their activities, and it's centered on the scriptures, but the scriptures themselves were not at fault. Admittedly, today, the internet has corporations that misuse it. The internet has individuals that misuse it, yet it is a tremendous vehicle for good. So we're going to talk about the scientific manual that has been misconstrued and misused, and yet it remains absolutely intact. The poet said, Last eve I paused beside the blacksmith's door and heard the anvil ring the vesper chime. Looking in I saw upon the floor old hammers worn with beating years of time. How many anvils have you had, said I, to wear and batter all those hammers so? Just one, said he, and then with twinkling eye, the anvil wears the hammers out, you know. And so I thought, the anvil of God's word for ages skeptic blows have beat upon, and though the noise of falling blows was heard, the anvil is unharmed, the hammer's gone. If we're going to consider real science in considering these icons, these symbols, these players in creation versus evolution, we're going to have to separate the real science from mythology and from religion. 
Did you know that the Bible is not a religious book? It is not a book of religion. It is a book of revelation. Religion is only mentioned in the Bible. Pure and undefiled religion takes care of the widows and the orphans. And that is mentioned in scriptures. But the Bible is not a religious book. Religion is man's attempt to justify his activities before God and show his own merit. And religion has some merit, but it's only relative. And our work should be good enough that they merit uh, some reward and some benefit, but they're not good enough to get us to heaven. The Bible is not a book of religion. It's a book of revelation. However, when we speak of evolution and its modern appearance, this was true in ancient Greece, and it was true in Darwin's day, Alfred Wallace is the co-author of the primary, primary concept of evolution along with Charles Darwin. And Alfred Wallace admitted that he got his ideas while he was in trances, while he was in a religious stupor. He admitted that. Then we look at Charles Darwin, and before he formulated all his ideas, and uh, before he published, Charles Darwin had a problem with little Annie. She was extremely ill. And uh, he and Emma, Charles and Emma, went to seances for a period of time to get some uh, spirit, some natural force, to help little Annie. That's very religious. And they even went to demonic seances. Now, there isn't a lot said about that, but the basis of his theory has to do with a religious preoccupation. So that brings us to the scientific manual. Can we demonstrate that the Bible, the scriptures, are scientific? 